Brother Avery here. So how many times do you think that people took showers per week in 1830? Um, three times. <laughs> you think three times? Yes. Oh, interesting. Like one or two? So it's, or like one or two times per zero. Week? You think zero? Zero to two. Zero to two. Yeah. So they didn't take any showers at all because there were no showers. And there was a widespread belief that getting into water would make you weak and ill. So they didn't really take baths either. So how did people stay clean? Well, being clean really involved rinsing your hands and face with water and using a towel to rub dirt off the rest of your body. And that was it. There were no showers, there were no baths. And when people did wash their hands, they didn't use any soap. The first fixed bathtub wasn't even installed in a house in America until around 1842. Fast forward all the way to 1860 and near unanimous experts said that the best thing to do as far as bathing was a quick dip in cold water. So no lounging around in the bathtub and no hot water. So it wasn't until about 1861 that the first major paper was published talking about germ theory and the idea that germs cause disease. So prior to that, people often believed that there were humors inside of people and they had to be kept in balance and that's where bloodletting came from and bad medical practices. It was actually quite difficult to get people to um, start sanitizing utensils and take baths and so even once we knew about germs, it took a long time for people to start believing what we knew about them and you had a lot of people that would trust the neighbors, you know, home remedy rather than wash their hands or wash their dishes. So I have another question for you. If you had $3,000 in 1830 and you could buy a certain amount of stuff in 1830 for that, how much money today would it take to buy that same amount of stuff? Um, need a lot more. Like how much? What's the guess? Uh, like maybe twice as much. Like $6,000 you think? Yeah. No, way more. Interesting. In 1830, how many people do you think lived on farms or in rural communities? What percentage of the people? I'm gonna say 80% of people lived rurally and 20% lived in cities. What do you think today it is? I think today it's probably like 65% <laughs> of people live in cities and 35% live rurally. 90%, a little over 90%, and today it's about 13%, so it's gone down an awful lot. It wasn't quite like today where you go to the store and you buy a lot of the things that you need. Back then, you would make or grow most of what you needed. So when you're living like that, growing or making everything that you have, you it takes a lot of work, and so the whole family is involved. A man really needed to get married in order to survive. So in those days, the prevailing belief, the culture said that children had an inherent evil in them and that had to be worked out or gotten out of them by lots of work and maybe some beatings. So they didn't get a lot of playtime and um, by middle childhood, they were expected to contribute to the household. <laughs> think the first refrigerator came about? Um, so, do you mean like like icebox or like actual refrigerator? I mean like actual refrigerator. I think like 1900s. Okay, 1900 and what? 1915. So the first refrigerator for home use didn't come out until 1913. <music> On 
hundreds. What was the Small biggest pops. issue? People would, you know, eat questionable food. And so the number one illness at the time was uh, intestinal problems. So people had bad stomachs, they would get food poisoning, and it was uh, a common thing for people to have stomach ailments because they weren't washing, they weren't, they were possibly eating bad food, and you, so you'd end up with a lot of problems. So imagine your own house and how much food you've got in it. Think about, you know, what you've got in your refrigerator, what's in the pantry, what's on the shelves. Once you've got that in your mind, take away everything that's in the refrigerator, that's gone. Because in 1830, there's no refrigerator. Next, go to the pantry and the shelves and everything disappears. That came from a store that's in a package because in those days, you didn't buy your food from the store, you made it. So that leaves you with not a lot of food. It was a very different time as far as food, hygiene, economics, um, everything is concerned and I think a lot of times we don't appreciate what a different sort of time period it was.